It is with pleasure that I come into your home today. Welcome to You Never Knew. My life has certainly been anything but good. We're joined today by veteran detective and legendary author John Cameron, author of It Was Always Me, Edward Edwards, the most prolific serial killer of all time. There are a few things I'd like to talk to you about. Build a fire in a person and not under him. Welcome. I'm here with veteran detective John Cameron, and we've just watched the second episode of It Was Him, The Many Murders of Ed Edwards on the Paramount Network. So in this episode, I mean, this is pretty much how the Zodiac Killer was exposed. Yeah, this is the most important episode, I think, because you had to look at Edwards as being the Zodiac Killer. That's who he was. And so if you just follow what the Zodiac said he was doing, that's exactly what Edwards did his whole life. Kill people, frame people, stage fake suicides and accidents. So I thought they did a great job portraying exactly who he was and that he really is the real Zodiac Killer. Okay, so in this episode, you actually head to San Francisco and, and examine these murders. Yeah, we met with some of the detectives on the case. We went to some of the sites, uh, talked to some of the people that uh, were really involved, talked to reporters. I mean, uh, it was uh, really exciting because that really is the essence of uh, Ed Edwards. He's the Zodiac. Now, early in the show, you know, Wayne's with April, Ed's daughter again, and, and she ties Ed, you know, her father, to the Zodiac. Was that the first time that connection had been made? That's the first time I'd heard a April say it. Um, but she had paperwork and stuff like that back in 2010 that Ed had saved that connected him to the Zodiac. So, you know, he bragged about uh, that the Zodiac case wasn't uh, being portrayed accurately and that makes sense because he was the Zodiac. So did she help send you in that direction or did you come up with that on your own? Actually, it was at her house that uh, I found an article where he had uh, claimed that he knew who the Zodiac was and he'd been in Deer Lodge prison and when she saw that, she couldn't believe it either because she didn't know that. Wayne also meets with other family members, John and Janine Edwards. Yeah, that's right. That's the uh, brother and sister. Well, I got to meet with them too. And uh, I think Wayne was most impressed with those two because they were very welcoming to their house and, uh, and he got a long conversation with them. And it was amazing how John looked exactly like Ed looked back in 1972. I don't think I would be as accepting as they seem to be with you. Why, why is that? Well, I think because they knew their father was a horrible person, criminal-wise, you know, that he was abusive, that he had a lot of anger, that they lived through a lot of horrible things. And so it probably wasn't that hard for them to accept that he was a killer. Now, you shared with me earlier that, by other accounts, he was actually a pretty good father. Yes, he was a loving man. He, uh, he stuck with his wife 43 years. He raised his children. He... He did a lot of good things. He coached the wrestling team. Unfortunately, he stole the money from it. <laughs> but he uh, he did have a lot of loving characters to him, but uh, he had that evil side too. So John, when you were explaining to Wayne about his father being the Zodiac Killer, you showed him a number of letters that, that the police didn't even have. Yeah, the most important ones, there, there were letters from the Zodiac sent in the Atlanta child case. Um, there were other Zodiac letters sent in uh, the Robeson family murder case. Um, and then there were my letters also where he actually claimed to know the Zodiac in Deer Lodge prison. Okay, but the Zodiac letters were fairly, you know, held close to the chest because they didn't want, want them to get out there in these other letters. I mean, how would you, how did you get them? Freedom of Inf Information Acts, I filed the, the Atlanta child killing Zodiac letter just came out around the time Ed first got caught in 2009. So that was released publicly by the FBI, mm -hmm. basically the year that he got caught. Yeah, I worked for the parole board in uh, 2008, 9, and 10. Um, in Deer Lodge Prison, and Ed Edwards had been in Deer Lodge Prison. Didn't the surviving member of one of the Zodiac attacks basically say that the only thing that he got from it was that his attacker had told him that he'd escaped from Deer Lodge Prison and that he'd stolen a car? Yeah, that was the 1969 Lake Berryessa attack, and he actually conversed with that couple on purpose, and he left that boy alive so that he could describe the getup he was wearing and the conversation he had, which was he had been in Deer Lodge prison, he had stolen a car, he had killed a guard, and he was fleeing to Mexico. And Edwards had done all of those things back in 1959 though. And so that's the problem they had trying to track down who he was. 
it was, you know, 12 years earlier that he had actually been in Deer Lodge prison. Okay, but he, I mean, you say that he left him alive for that purpose. He stabbed him six times. Right, and he did it right where he knew it would not kill him. Edwards was very good at that. It, it wouldn't have been any good to leave them both dead and nobody to describe the getup that the Zodiac was wearing. It wouldn't create terror. Oh, because he was wearing the whole, the whole I'm the Grim Reaper thing. It, it was the executioner's hood. The executioner. Yeah, and that's because he was the executioner. He was framing people and getting them executed. Okay, so but in the Akron, Ohio article, there's a 37-year-old informant. That was Ed? Yeah, he actually went to the, uh, the Akron Beacon Journal after the Zodiac happened and claimed that he was in Deer Lodge prison with the Zodiac and he knew who he was and that he, everything was based on ancient Egyptian history and that's exactly what the ciphers were based on. Okay, now that leather work that Ed was capable of, that, that album that was passed down to Wayne, I mean, that was crazy. Well, that's what Deer Lodge Prison was known for, was it's really good leather work. And the Zodiac at Lake Berryessa had a really nice leather sheath on his side for his knife. And Ed was very good at leather working. He had been in Deer Lodge Prison doing it, and it's very detailed work. Now, I love the part where Ed's in prison, and he's essentially communicating with... Um, with, what, I guess, what Wayne's grandma, his, his, Ed's wife at the time. Yeah, he writes about that in his book, that that's how he spoke to her, by flashing the light. You know, we went into the prison, and you could have easily done that, but flashlights in all of Ed's cases were very important. He would leave them at the scene of certain crimes. He would use them to bash people's heads in, and he wrote about flashlights in his book quite a bit. And it was just Morris Code. So in this show, it ties the Zodiac murders to another Lover's Lane case in Ohio. Yeah, that was the one he pled guilty to, um, 1977 case, and he wanted to get his death penalty on that case. That's the only reason he admitted it. But then it turned out that there was no death penalty that year because it had been put on hold. So he ended up confessing. In Ohio as a state. In Ohio as a state. And so he ended up confessing to another Lover's Lane murder, which made two Lover's Lane's murders, just trying to get his death penalty. So. The Lover's Lane case in Ohio, that's the Lavico Straub case. Yeah, Billy Straub and Judith Lavico, they were parked at Norton Park, and uh, somebody approached them with a gun and basically just shot them up while they were making out in a car, and it was Ed. Okay, he so Wayne, to it. Wayne visits another cop who doesn't want to meet with you, but promises uh, Wayne some DNA. And you ever got the DNA, and that's really what we wanted, was the DNA. Um, but those cops would not meet with me because at the time that I was investigating Ed, I was not a cop and they were. If he had given him DNA, would it have been any, in any way admissible? I mean, it wouldn't have been the chain of, the chain of custody it would have been violated. Well, that's, that's one of the reasons why we ended up not getting it because I wasn't a police officer anymore, Wayne wasn't. We were just actually interviewing for a show. We were hoping they would do something with it, you know? So, so tell me about this, the whole concept of this murder mimicry. Well, that's just a, a phrase that Ed used. He wrote it on a website and um, detailed how to crack his codes in the Zodiac case, actually, on that website, and called what he was doing murder mimicry because he was able to fool the cops without ever having an M.O. they could follow. So he shoots this couple on a lover's lane this week, mm -hmm. he stabs a couple on a lover's lane the next week, and he burns some bodies the next week. He's tying it to the Zodiac, he's creating murders that are similar, but nobody would think, at least, that this was the mindset back in the day. A serial killer, if he shoots him, he's gonna stick with shooting. Sure, you're gonna stay with whatever it is that works yeah. for you. If he's strangling them and binding them, he's gonna do that. Ed was every serial killer in one, putting it all together. In your book, I, I, I've noticed that his mother committed suicide when he was very, very young, four or five years old. Was it yeah, what's, what's interesting is those the death of his mother occurred August 8th, okay. and the two uh, Lover's Lane's murders that he confessed to in 2010 occurred August 8th and August 9th. So he was a ritual killer, and he on the day his mother died, it was important for him to kill two people out in the car having sex out of wedlock. And That's he's, how he was born. He was born an illegitimate he child. He was born illegitimate. In a time where that was very, very shame. Didn't know his dad, didn't know his mom. His mom dies in front of him, didn't have love. I understand that he actually cared about, was, was it his stepmother that ended up raising him for the number of years after that? Well, he as soon as his mother was killed in front of him, he, she he was raised by another stepmother, stepmother and then she right. died. 
a bit of mess. Shortly later, yes. And then he was basically raised by a uh, grandmother, but then sent to the orphanage where he lived from about age seven until he escaped when he was 12. Yeah, he was just too much to handle in the house, and then he became too much to handle in... Yeah, he could in the orphanage, he was orphanage. horrible. But he also was severely abused, you know, by the older boys, by the nuns, most mm. likely by the priests. And by the system. Right. That he was a bad wetter. He was a fire starter. He was an animal torturer. He had all the signs of a serial killer by 11. So you met with a lot of experts and cops that tied to the Zodiac and that have spent a lot of time on it. And they seem to want to help bring closure to the Zodiac. Do you think that um, they're convinced now? I mean, are you... And do you think Wayne sure? You know, I'm not even so sure about whether Wayne sure or not. I, I'm not so sure the cops involved in a lot of these cases are convinced because many times they've already destroyed a lot of innocent people by the innuendos and the suspicions of others that were innocent. So it's really they shut down when they hear it. Well, I, I think that there was a lot of doubt and uh, for quite a while, but once the cipher was essentially cracked by, by yourself and, and Neil, and once you knew Ed Edwards' name and you, and you plug it in, Either the Zodiac Killer was Ed Edwards or the Zodiac Killer was framing Ed Edwards and trying to make it look like it was Ed Edwards. Yeah, I, th there's just no doubt that it was Ed Edwards. You know, when we saw the, the uh, identity cipher and we confronted him, he basically said, it's me. And, uh, but that we didn't know the whole story. Mm -hmm. He framed people. That was the important part that he needed to get to us because he wanted to, to come out but he wanted to make sure we understood the depth of what he had done. Do you think that that's all? Do you think you've uncovered all of the murders of, of Ed Edwards at this point? No, I think the show will do exactly what my book did. It'll bring out many, many more murders because he killed every waking moment of his life and framed people. And there's a lot of murders out there that fit his pattern and others will see it once they know. Has there been any efforts to take all of the old police records and effectively digitize them so that people can search for them and, and, and make these connections. The FBI actually did a great job of digitalizing a lot of these major cases and they're all available on their website now to read. But some of these cases, yeah, they're sitting in you know file boxes in a dusty room and have never been even opened up. Uh, I, we certainly hope that now that this is coming to light that more families can be helped and more cases can be solved and, and, and put to rest. That was the whole intention from the beginning of me writing the book and doing the show, is to expose this and force the system to open an investigation because they were not going to do it on their own until they're forced. Thank you again for being here. I um, hope to see you again next week when we get to find out more about the many murders of Ed Edwards. And the new book is incredible. I must say, it's, it's just gorgeous the way that it looks. And for those of you, if there's anybody out there still hasn't read this, it's, uh, it was always me. Edward Edwards, the most prolific serial killer of all time. Thank you, and I uh, hope to see you again next week for certain. Thanks a lot, Barry. <laughs>